Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, each year on third Sunday of October, we celebrate World Mission Sunday. This year it falls on today, which is 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time Year A. Therefore, I would like to wish all my listeners a happy Mission Sunday. Do you know that you are a missionary? Oh yes, we are all missionaries for Christ. Beloved, Christ has given us his divine mandate to go to all nations and make him known to everybody, to preach the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth and make disciples of all nations. On Mission Sunday, beloved, we remind ourselves of this call to be on mission for Christ and to pray for all missionaries involved in the propagation of the faith, especially in mission lands, and also contribute financially to support their work. Though some people like priests, religious, and those in consecrated lives have responded to Christ's call to be missionaries in mission lands for primary evangelization, every baptized person, irrespective of where he or she finds himself or herself, is a missionary for Christ, sent to teach and to touch lives of others and to bring relief, love, peace, and joy of Christ to people. We, all, we are all surrounded by missionary work in our families, workplaces, streets, supermarkets, shops, communities, among others. The little you do to bring comfort to the life of another person, showing the mercy and the love of Christ is a missionary work, especially in this year marked by the suffering and challenges created by the COVID-19 pandemic. We all need the care and love of one another. Have you shown some love and care and affection to somebody in this era of coronavirus? Probably by simply taking a, a call through the phone to that person and finding out how that person is faring or even shopping for that person. Mission, therefore, should not be just seen as the church on the move to evangelize but also an individual Christian on the move for an action of love in Christ. The joy of a missionary does not actually come from how much material gift one receives. Rather, it comes from how much lives one touches and how much joy one is able to bring to others. How much love have you shown to another person? especially in this coronavirus pandemic era. Dear friends of in Christ, in the first reading of today, prophet Isaiah sees the hand of God at work in the actions of Cyrus, the pagan king. This is to recognize that God acts outside of the limit of his chosen people. In the light of today's celebration, I will say, God sent Cyrus, the patient king, as a missionary to his people Israel after a long period of exile to bring them relief and to see to the freedom and return of their, to their homeland. Cyrus obeyed God and responded accordingly. If a pagan king like Cyrus could avail himself as God's instrument for a good cause for God's people, how much more you and I baptize and incorporated into Christ cannot avail ourselves for the purpose of Christ. As we avail ourselves to go on mission for Christ, we are bound to face challenges and opposition as Jesus himself did, but that should not deter us in any way. Beloved, in today's gospel reading, the Pharisees were looking forward to find any means possible to disgrace Jesus or to discredit him and to challenge his message of salvation. They pose a question to Jesus only to trap him. So their question, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus said, pay your taxes to Caesar, he would have incurred the displeasure of the Jews. For some Jews considered payment of taxes to the Roman officials as evil. On the other hand, if Jesus had said, no, 
people that have come under fire of the Roman government and might have been considered as instigating the people against the ruling Roman officials. Therefore, Jesus' reply was to demand from the very people who asked him the question to show him the money for payment of taxes and ask whose head was on the coin. When they answered that the image that was on the coin was that of Caesar, Jesus then told, said to them, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Indeed, Jesus eluded their trap and taught them to be responsible citizens of government and of God's kingdom. Beloved, we should learn from the approach of Jesus as people sent on mission for Jesus. We should be on the alert for the challenges and obstacles that may come our way and be smart enough to overcome them so that we are not disgraced. We should always pray to the Holy Spirit for discernment and wisdom to face challenges squarely in our missionary activities. My dear brothers and sisters, again, we should see every situation as an opportunity to teach the truth about the message of the kingdom of God and to correct others and not in any way attack them. By this and by his response to the question of the, to the Pharisees, Jesus taught them about the need to distinguish themselves and to distinguish between divine obligation and human obligation, rendering allegiance to God while respecting one's obligation to support human community through our obligation to civil authority. Christians, beloved, are to be responsible citizens and fulfill their civic responsibilities. Simply put, a good Christian must be a good and responsible citizen. As the second reading of today tells us, remember your work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in Christ. In all situations, dear friends, let us be guided by these three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, so that the hand of God will be at work always in and through us to the, to the shame of those who seek our downfall. To God be the glory, the one who has called and sent us to be on mission for Christ. As we celebrate this Mission Sunday, I wish you a blessed and happy week. May the Lord bless and guide you and bless the work of your hands all the days of your life. Amen.